Hey, hey, how's it going guys? My name is Aylwood and today we're taking a look at Boomerang X, a brand new game just released on Steam and the Nintendo Switch. And to answer the ultimate question, as always, is it worth your time? So, Boomerang X is a single player, indie, fast paced action, bullet time arena shooter. Set on a mysterious fantasy island, you take on the role of an unnamed ninja like humanoid, shipwrecked on the shores of this very unusual landmass. You'll be exploring the impressive architecture of a lost civilization, taking on an assortment of dark, void like beings, all while utilizing your incredibly agile, high agility skill set. So aesthetically, the first thing worth mentioning is the game's simple, under-textured and light-hearted art style. Similar to Breath of the Wild and Blue Fire, all objects and textures seem to have a light cell shading effect applied to them. This creates that subtle, tune-like look to the world while still maintaining fully 3D rendered environments. This combination of tune-like visuals and weathered colouring throughout really adds an eastern touch to the world, especially when considering the game's environments, music and gameplay. Colours used are generally pale yet surprisingly lively throughout, giving most areas of the game a simple, minimalist design while also delivering a clean, light-hearted look that thanks to colour contrasting gets rounded off very well. The lighting effects are brilliant, definitely subtle but brilliant. You've got the terrain only shadow effects, environmental lighting, mist and smoke effects and distant fog effects which are all great. Simple yet effective, but by far the best effects are the dynamic, powerful, in-your-face unit and interaction effects, whether a projectile is an ability used or an object destroyed. The effects really stand out and pack one hell of a punch, even more so with enemy specific attacks. Very impressive, I must say. Textures and detail used are far from the most intricate designs you'll ever see, yet complement this tune like aesthetic extremely well. Surfaces like wood, stone, and metal are defined more by their structure and edges rather than their basic texture alone. A design detail that saves on development time as well as your platform's processing power. The UI is absolutely perfect in my opinion, clean, simple and animated. What's not to love? You've got your health and wave target icons along the top of the screen and your power up display at the bottom, but it's the enemy location screen effect that really comes in handy. When close to an enemy, you get a black ink like effect along the edge of the screen to indicate their location. This gives you just enough time to react so you hopefully don't take damage. Your success rate however completely depends on your response time so be careful. Level layouts are not bad, since this is an arena shooter. Most areas of the game are either stadium-like arenas with a big focus on vertical terrain or single path transition routes to link each arena together. All of which come with simple ground clutter, minor platforming challenges and environmental hazards. Character and enemy designs are quite impressive considering the game's simple minimalist design. All enemies have pretty realistic movements and attack animations to match their character models very well. The only problem is the lack of actual character models that would require fast, powerful movements movements. Other than a big frog monster that slings his weight around or airborne eels that slither dramatically, practically all enemies have a more gentle, docile design. These include butterflies, jellyfish, floating eyeballs and fluffball spiders. All of which do deal damage to you of course, but when you're a super fast teleporting ninja, they don't really stand a chance do they? The last boss design however is completely different and really pushes the boat out in terms of creativity. It's a shame I can't show it. And considering they're a giant mantis remains littered around the place, I was expecting a considerably more agile enemy base. The OSTs of Boomerang X are not the best in my opinion. A light-hearted combination of Eastern traditional instruments and occasional FX sounds used to create somewhat uncomfortable, generally high tempo, 15th century Japanese inspired battle music. They also threw in a few handfuls of seemingly out of tune sounds for intensity, quite unique extra effect when entering flux, but seemed to focus on each OST's background effects rather than any kind of main melody. This causes each track to seem a bit too similar when compared to lack 
any kind of diversity and to go in one year and straight out the other. The final boss theme also shares these traits, except with a touch more intensity compared to the rest. Bit of a shame really. Everything else sound related though is pretty decent. Environmental sounds, attack sounds and enemy sounds all seem to match the on screen visuals relatively well, but are usually so plain and quiet you don't often pick up on them. All you tend to hear during gameplay are two things. Throw the boomerang, teleport to the boomerang. Throw the boomerang, teleport to the boomerang. It does sound repetitive, I know, but in all fairness, if I hadn't have mentioned it, the average player probably wouldn't have noticed. But the fact I had to mention it doesn't exactly demonstrate unbelievably high sound quality. Overall, a passable soundtrack standard at best, but definitely nothing noteworthy. Now for the gameplay. So Boomerang X doesn't have any actual difficulty options to choose from before you play. It is what it is whether you like it or not, just like every good game should be. It does however come with a new game plus mode once the game is fully complete. This difficulty comes with more aggressive enemies, harder waves to complete, as well as darker arm wrappings for that fashion souls touch. The lore of the game, considering its very simple mechanics, is surprisingly vague. But as mentioned, you take on the role of some sort of mummified ninja like humanoid that just left a crypt somewhere in Egypt. Your little wooden boat can't seem to handle a couple of waves as you approach a small island somewhere in the sea, so naturally you find yourself shipwrecked on its shores. As you explore, you start to notice both statues and corpses of a giant mantis race that seem to inhabit the island before you arrived. Eventually, you'll stumble across a worm creature named Tipan, who confirms the weapon you use is indeed a mantis artifact, and these dark beasts scattered around the place seem to have wiped them all out. But that's pretty much all you get from a storyline perspective. And since T-Pan is the only NPC in the game you actually talk to, his first person lore descriptions don't really help the situation either. When you first start the game, you're shown a short intro cutscene of the aforementioned boat and island. You're then immediately brought to your character, waking up on the shores of the island, where you take control of them and play. If you're familiar with the character Genji from Overwatch, these controls are going to seem second nature. If you're not familiar, however, don't worry, they're simple enough anyway. You've got your general, first person movement controls as you'd expect, with the addition of throwing, recalling, slingshot, jumping, air braking, flux, power ups and comet mode. The first three are obviously your main boomerang abilities. You can throw the boomerang, recall the boomerang and teleport to the boomerang, otherwise known as slingshotting. Jumping is more like a powerful forward long jump rather than your typical vertical jump. Air braking is simply halting your forward momentum while mid air so you instead fall directly downwards. Flux is this game's version of slow time and runs on a very generous duration. There are two possible power ups you can store and use on command, scatter shot when you kill two enemies with one throw, and needle when you kill three or more, both of which have pretty self-explanatory names and fire exactly as you'd expect. And comet mode is your ultimate ability. Once enough enemies have been killed and your comet bar is full, you can enter a state of invulnerability and teleport repeatedly to an enemy's location and pretty much one shot everything for a short time. Your two most common abilities, flux and slingshot, don't seem to have any kind of cooldown either. Very interesting. The base concept of the game is exactly how it looks. You enter progressively harder arena stages, take on waves of enemy units, beat all the waves without dying, progress to the next area, rinse and repeat. I can't even elaborate further because it's quite literally as simple as that. What makes Boomerang X unique however is its wave target system, damage taken mechanics and the overpowered index finger. When a wave starts you get several wave target icons on the screen to indicate how many specific enemies need to be destroyed before the next wave can start. This saves you clearing an entire room of enemies and instead focus down the wave targets for faster clear times. Your character does indeed take damage from projectiles and enemy contact of course, but when it comes to contact, enemies need to be within close range for a few moments before you actually take damage. This is indicated by the black on screen ink effect I mentioned earlier. Also, your character actually dies from a single hit. The only difference is your armor icons need to be fully depleted first before that's actually possible. You get extra armor icons from small unmissable fountains scattered around the game. They're fully restored before entering each arena area and can be replenished during combat by standing in health platforms for a 
a few seconds. And last but not least, the overpowered index finger. I mean, look at it go. Truly an impressive display of unbridled strength. It's breathtaking. You play a mummified, agile man, and he has more power in that one index finger than practically all enemies in the game. Imagine that boomerang being used by one of the giant mantis. I dare to imagine it. But let us not forget the combat. Not a lot to elaborate on, really. You throw the boomerang at enemies, they try to make contact with you and fire projectiles back until either you or the dark beasts are destroyed. Due to having no cooldown on slingshot and flux, the only way you can possibly die is if you're swarmed by enemies or incoming projectiles, which is far more likely on the later stages than the early ones. I do like the fact that some enemies are impervious to damage unless you hit the large pink button located somewhere on their body. These kind of enemies always seem to be larger and have far better attacks than your standard mob. These include bile spray from the frogs, lunar beams from the moths, and sky discs from the giraffes. The last boss, again, I have to say, was very impressive. Possibly the best part of the entire game. The arena, the mechanics, and the multiple phases are all very top-notch quality. It's a shame I can't include it without spoiling it for you guys, but please take my word on it, very impressive. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? If you're in the market for fast-paced action, light-hearted visuals, and a very to-the-point concept, Boomerang X may be the simple, entertaining, yet very short title you're looking for. I'm going to give this game a 4 star or 78 out of 100. I like the consistent, high action arenas no matter where you are in the game, the easy to learn, hard to master combat mechanics, the amazing last boss fight, the option to adjust UI icon sizes in your settings, as well as the raw, fun gameplay experience provided. I played the game from start to finish in one sitting, with only one bathroom break in between, so the immersion is definitely there. The only problem was the start to finish time period was a laughable 2 hours total, and £16 for a title that short is a rip off no matter how you look at it, new game plus or not. The fact that there are no enemies with high agility and fast movements like your character was a bit of a shame, the lack of any kind of storyline and only one NPC to keep you company throughout your entire playthrough did feel a bit cheap, the air break ability seemed quite unusual to use throughout, and trying to position yourself above healing platforms felt a bit inconsistent all the way through, and finally, the lack of any kind of cooldown on your flux and slingshot abilities were a bit of an issue for me. It left very little room for problem solving and reaction time development, and the fact that I can hold the flux button down indefinitely made me feel like a child riding a bike with stabilizers. I don't really want them there, but since I have the ability to exploit their usefulness, I may as well. As I said, on the very late stages and the last boss fight, the flexibility is mandatory to beat the game, but even a minor cooldown mechanic would have been nice just to stop me feeling like a cheater exploiting game mechanics. All in all, a very expensive 2 hour gameplay experience, but a fun, pleasant and relatively satisfying experience nonetheless. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I'll be reviewing in future, and here's a thought, considering the power of just one mantis boomerang artifact, how the hell did these slow, obvious, dark beast creatures manage to wipe out an entire race of giant agile mantis? I've thought about it, and honestly, I haven't got a clue. Definitely something to think about. But as always, all the best guys, take care. Our fates do seem entwined, don't they?